All right, here we have a look at the charging station. This is what is what's been done so far? Uh, this is the the uh, this is the case from Harbor Freight. It um, opens up, and what I've done so far is I've taken these little straps that you can get at your hardware store. Uh, I think they're meant for holding up ductwork and that sort of thing, uh, pipes. Uh, they're made out of hard plastic material and I've taken half inch screws from the underside just drilled a hole straight up through machine screws and put a locking hex nut on each point four points here that's a 24 volt uh, 70 rated that's up to 70 amp power supply uh, the actual jacks that they installed well, the person I got this from um, the RC groups classifieds I think those are only rated at 60 amps but you could change them out if you want before I'm doing this it's gonna be more than enough power to power this guy and this is the, uh, I haven't even unboxed it yet this is the um, dual output uh, 20 amp per port Richter uh, Turnergy and it uh, 300 watts in each each output and what you get with it here are the uh, you get some alligator clips and you get heavy gauge uh, 12 gauge in this case cable in here wiring now you get some uh, alligator clips and you also get some banana clips too which that'll come in handy for for what I'm about to do with this guy uh, so there you get, you get uh, two pair of each of all that and then the actual unit itself is a little bit like this and there's the back end of the unit each output balance ports main unit right here visually controlled and DC power hence the uh, 24 volt guy over here and I also have uh, I will have some uh, high rated jacks here I'll show you those Let's see the model number on there I forget where I picked these up I think it was off of uh, Amazon banana plug jacks. Uh, I'm going to use those and what I'll do is I could you could take acrylic or you could take um, any kind of hard material and in this case I'm going to try this foam it's Elmer's foam and I'm going to try to just make a top to it right here with the Elmer's foam and uh, a lid basically and on top I'm going to put these jacks for extra accessibility and I will not charge on top of that foam I will charge in uh, some clay plates that I have I picked up uh, picked up these guys at the hardware store now you'll get comments from people saying well that's not truly a fire safe box like people are using well they're clay and I have a lid for it and they fit full of two batteries inside lid on top set this on the side outside of my charger and that's how I intend to charge for now I'm also going to install a smoke alarm on the top of the lid here as well for extra safety although it'll be in eyesight most of the time as I step out of the room for a minute while I'm charging and I drilled out two ports on the side for fans one there and one there and over here I'm going to take and wire up this guy has a rocker switch for a simple on off for the AC power and I'll uh, get proper gauge Y split uh, cabling to go from here to there and I'll outline how that's going to get wired later on and I'll probably put a divider somewhere in here uh, I should also mention that the uh, Turnigy uh, dual charger is actually going to sit on top of the foam lid that I'm going to make for this next to the uh, next to the banana jacks and also I have a uh, 
parallel adapter so I can charge two batteries at once. So I'll embed that on the top as well. And that's that. Here's a look at the uh, connector for the power supply line. Uh, this being the power supply line here, the Y adapter. Uh, check out the detail section of the uh, YouTube video. I will have what vendor I got everything from. Uh, this guy had to be wired just like this. A closer look at the wiring, we had to connect these two via the black negative connection. And there was a cross on this one is actually, a, the, should be white, but it's red. And here's the white connector. Here's the negative, and the green being the ground right here. For this particular switch, this is how that worked out. And there'll be a link to a fellow uh, FPVer out there or, uh, who built a charging station, fellow RC person who built a charging station just like this, and he is how I got this diagram and did it a lot quicker. And that's the switch. Plug it in externally there. And I'll go in there with some hot glue, I'll seal off these connections, and we'll be good to go. Okay, as a charging station update, I uh, had a problem because the fans were not 24 volt, obviously. The fans I got are 12 volt, so I had to find a way to get 12 volts to the fan. So what I've done is I tapped into the existing fans on each of the 12 volt portions of the power supply. And I don't know if you can see that there, but I spliced into the wires and tapped out for both of them and ran the cables. So I've got the, the 12 volt there and the 12 volt over there. Ran the cable behind the rubber. Charging station update. I had to find a way to get 12 volt power to the fans because it's 24 volt. So I tapped into the existing fans on the PSU. And you can kind of see how I did that there. I had to remove the fan, the top fan. And that worked out pretty well, although the leads were kind of short. And I ran the cables. And I secured the cables to the bottom with some glue as well, all of the cables. Put the divider in at this point, and I'll find and cut some foam, and that should probably do it, then the top will come on, and that, that'll be it. Here's a look at my uh, charging station and my fire safe box, all in one shot here. The charging station is right here. I took a box off of Harbor Freight one of those uh, metal aluminum cases. Did some mods to it. As you can see on the uh, blog entry for this, I have more details and pictures on how I made the cuts and so forth. But basically, I cut holes on the side, put a fan in there, and I wired in a switch on the side. And we'll start with the inside first. Have a uh, 24 volt power supply I got off of someone off the classifieds on uh, RC groups. Uh, that guy kicks out a ton of amps and watts. This is the Richter 2 by 300 watt 20 amp. That's 20 amps per port for charging. Pretty good charger also discharges as well. Have some room here for a multimeter, some extra connections and so forth. There's the fan there that I wired in. The switch, found some good diagrams online on how to wire that switch in so I didn't blow myself up. That was the main thing. I used some Elmer's foam as a top layer with some, just some, I need to get another piece. It's not completely covered there, but I have uh, decals that I covered over to give it a little texture. A little smoke detector right there so it's in place if I'm not somewhere where there's a smoke detector but I'm always going to be within sight. I should charge her so that nothing blows up or catches on fire. Then I got these paraboards, EP Buddy paraboard version 3's so that I could also parallel charge two batteries on each one if I wanted to. have to make sure that the voltage on both batteries are within 0.2 
and that the batteries have uh, the same type 2S, 3S and you add up all the milliamp hours so if one was a 2000 another one was a 2000 you charge at 4 amps that would be 1C or 8 for 2C if you're able to charge a 2C Oops. and I got these extensions off of uh, various Amazon sites uh, for balance charging and for the connections to the batteries to make it easier for them to reach uh, my charging area makes them easier to reach the charging area and after some doing I built myself a charging box initially I started off with clay plates and that was cumbersome to kind of take out of the house so I decided to make a portable charging station fire safe box and transport box this guy is a 20 inch toolbox from Lowe's and some drywall. I cut it to size, made an initial mistake of spraying it with Plasti Dip, but it was such a thin layer it's not going to really hurt anything. I was doing it to try to keep the dust level down from inside here, it kind of flakes off. Now the dust level is fine and that won't be an issue. I did plasti dip the top of this because I didn't want the metal to come in contact with any of these connections and cause a short. But in the end, I ended up using electrical tape, anyways. So there's some electrical tape around the sides to prevent shorts and some electrical tape here on the, uh, the hatch. I made enough slots for all of my batteries in one shot. I might make a, another toolbox that's a lot smaller that can hold maybe six batteries if I don't want to take the whole thing with me and I can charge them. I set them right next to each other in the other room and the cord will reach basically to the center here and I can use that as the charging area or the left side bring it closer together and it works really well. Of course if I want to take this on the road and use it in the road it's kind of heavy maybe not the best choice probably be better to have a smaller charger for in the car to take to hook up to a battery at the site. Uh, however, a lot of sites have AC now, so uh, it's kind of nice to have that. And I can close the lid straight down, like so, latch it up, take it with me. Initially, I had this guy up on top, uh, but that wasn't the best bet for transport, although I have yet to actually transport it out of the house. So there you have it charging station and a fire safe box and transport box.